Hello everyone! Today we're making the ultimate rank system where you can control the amount of points you get, eliminations, you can rank up, you can rank down, you can control the colors of the rank, and we're gonna set up a fully custom UI within Verse. It's gonna be epic. I hope you guys enjoy. So we're in a fresh project here, and let's go up into the Verse tab, into the Verse Explorer, and in here, I'm going to right click and create a new verse file. And before we begin, we're going to have different verse files. We're going to have actually multiple verse files, each which are going to have a specific job that they're going to accomplish. So the first of our many files that we're going to create is going to be actually our player underscore stats manager. So we're going to create a new file called player stats manager. And this player stats manager is going to be in charge of managing the stats and the actual information that our player should store so because we want our stats our eliminations our points and our rank to save between different sessions we're going to be using this player stats manager to handle all of that verse persistent stuff so the first thing we need is we need some sort of container that actually holds the information that we want to store so i'm going to actually down here below this so outside of the class and create a new player underscore stats class this player stats class is going to have three variables the first one is going to be the eliminations which is going to be an int and i'm just going to initialize that to zero Next, we're going to have points, which is also an int, which you can just think of as ELO or just your like MMR, I guess. I'm just going to call it points because it's a lot simpler to work with. And lastly, we're going to have our rank of type int. The next thing we need to do is we need to create a weak map that stores a player stats corresponding to a specific player. So what you need to do is you need to go uh, up here, uh, not inside any of these classes, but up here, we want to create a new player stats map. So player stats map in the global scope. And this is actually going to be a weak map and a weak map allows us to store things across multiple sessions. This is what's actually going to be stored somewhere in versus backend. So it's going to take two types. The first one is going to be a player type like this. So a type of player. And the second one is the thing we actually want to store per player. In this case, it's going to be the player stats. So we just pass in a player stats and we just set this to an empty map. But we're going to get an error here because the player stats is not a persistable type. A persistable type is just simply something that can be stored and persist across multiple sessions. And to fix that, we need to simply mark this class with one, the persistable specifier like this. And two, we also need to mark it with the final specifier. This just makes it so that we can't inherit from this class. If we do create subclasses, we're not allowed to inherit from this player stats variable. But this is fine. It's not going to bother us at the moment. So you can see now the error went away and we are now saving a player stats per every player. Okay, so I'm actually going to get rid of this on begin thing here. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a few methods in, inside of our player manager. The first one is going to be an init method, which is going to run at the start of our game. It's going to, it's going to take an array of players like so. And we're just going to leave this blank at the moment. Next, we're going to have an initialize player stats variable. This is what's actually going to initialize an individual player's statistics. So we're just going to take an individual player. Next, we're going to get a get player stats variable. That way you can have access to the player stats that correspond to a specific player. So this is going to return a player underscore stats class. And for now, I'm just going to set this to an empty player stats, but we're just creating the methods here. And then lastly, we're going to create an update stats function here. So update stats. And this is going to run anytime we get an elimination so we can then modify their, their eliminations their points and their ranks. So for this, we're going to take in the player. We're also going to take a, the new elimination count, which is going to be an int, the new points, which is also an int. And then lastly, the new rank, which is also an int. And we set this to void like so. And for now, we're just going to be have it leave it at empty. So these are the four core functions that we're going to be using for our player stats manager. So let us start with the init method. So since we have access to all the players here in our when we first begin the game, we can just loop through this array like so. For every player in players, we just simply call the initialize player stats method like this. And the reason I made this a separate component is because whenever somebody joins mid game, we also want to be calling this initialize player stats. So what is actually going to be going inside of this initialize player stats method? Well, in here, we're going to be doing two things. Firstly, we're going to be checking if a player stats already exists somewhere in Fortnite servers. If it does, then we don't really need to do anything. We can just retrieve them whenever we want using this get player stats function. But if there isn't already a player stats stored somewhere within Fortnite, that means that they're a new player. So we need to create a new player stats and store it in the player stats map. So let's do if and then player stats map of player. And what we're doing here is we're indexing the specific player within the player stats map. If it finds something, then this is going to succeed. If it doesn't find anything, then this is going to fail. 
if it does find something then we don't have to do anything we can just print something like that already exists for this if we don't find any player stats in the player stats map then what we need to do here is we need to create a new player stats so we just create another if statement here like this and we just set player stats map of this player is going to be equal to a new empty player underscore stats like that that is pretty much it then we can just do something like print create a new stats that is our initialized player stats next for the get player stats uh, we follow pretty much the same procedure here we want to check if there already is a player stats map if there is then we retrieve that player stats otherwise then we just return an empty player stats like this so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to do player stats map of player but this is a failable function so if this doesn't exist then we can do the or operator and just return an empty player stats class so now most of the time whenever we call the get player stats method the player is already going to be initialized so they're already going to have a player stats anyway so this should always get the player stats that curse that is inside this player stats map next we need this update player stats method now before we actually get to this we're actually i'm actually going to create a new function that is outside of this player stats manager it's actually going to be outside of everything because this is going to be a constructor so i'm going to create a, an update player stats function here update player stats and i'm going to mark this with the constructor specifier here a constructor simply returns a new player a new class which in this case, we're going to be returning the new player stats uh, class here. What we need in here is firstly, we need the elimination. So we're going to do eliminations of type int. We also need the points of type int. And we also need the rank of type int. And this is going to be colon equals to a player underscore stats class. So in, within this constructor, we can now set the member variables to whatever we want. For instance, we set the eliminations. If we wanted to, we could set this to one, but that means whenever we call this constructor, we're always going to return a player stats variable with one elimination, which isn't what we want. So that's why we specified these parameters here. That way we can set eliminations to be equal to the eliminations variable here. And we can just do the same for the rest. So points equals points and rank equals rank. Now we can go back in here into the update stats and because we're passing in, we're getting the new eliminations, new points and new rank, we can then do something like the updated stats is going to be equal to this update player stats constructor like this. Now we're expecting the eliminations, the points and the rank, which we can just pass in as the new eliminations, the new points and the new rank like that. This is gonna give us our updated stats, but now we need to write these updated stats to the actual player stats map again that way we actually update them within the actual servers so to that we simply do if set player stats map of player is going to be equal to this new updated stats like that and that's pretty much it we've now updated the player stats and what i'm also going to do is i'm just going to have this instead of being void we're going to actually return a player underscore stats class like that and then simply here we just return the updated Stat. This is going to be useful later on uh, just for referencing the new stats once we actually update the player stats. And in here, I just added these print statements uh, just to showcase that whenever we actually update these stats, they're actually going to be updated. But that is pretty much it for our player stats manager. Let's go back into our verse explorer and in this content or this rank tutorial, I'm going to right click and create a new verse file. And this one is actually going to be our rank underscore manager. This is where we're going to be putting all of the logic that is actually going to handle our ranks like earning points, ranking up, losing points, ranking down, all that good stuff. So we're going to create a new rank manager like that and we're going to go into our rank manager. So before we actually create any functions in here, uh, first thing I'm just going to get rid of this on begin. We're not going to be needing that, but I'm going to go here um, outside of this rank manager and create a new separate class. This is going to be the rank class and we're going to set this to concrete because we're going to have some editable members here. So every rank is going to have a name. So we can create a new variable called name of type string, and we can just initialize this to something like rank for now. We're going to be changing this later because it's editable. This is going to make our ranks fully custom. We're also going to have a points needed variable of type int. And again, this is the amount of points needed to actually reach this current rank. For now, this is fine. We can just leave it as that. That is our humble rank class. And then I'm also going to create another class called rank underscore settings, which is going to be another concrete class like this. And the reason it's concrete is because we're going to have an editable array of ranks. So I'm going to create a ranks of type rank equals array. That way we can dynamically add as many ranks or as little ranks as we want within our creative device. So now in our rank manager, we can actually create a new editable class called settings, 
we'll have type rank underscore settings equals rank underscore settings. Now, if we actually go back into UEFN and build our verse code, you notice that we can actually drag out um, our, well, both our player stats and our rank manager. If we drag out our rank manager, we, you can see we now have this settings tab that we can expand. And we have this array of ranks. And when we add an element, you can see we can add a new element. So let's say, for example, this one's going to be unranked and points needed is going to be zero, right? Everyone starts at unranked. Let's create a new rank here. We're going to call this one something like bronze one or whatever. And points needed, let's say it is five. So you can see that this allows us to fully customize our rank system and we can add as many ranks as we want. Okay, let's begin actually filling up this rank manager. Firstly, just like our player stats manager, we're going to have an init method here, which is going to take, again, a list of players like this, type void, for now, nothing. Next, we're going to have just like the player manager again, an initialize player, player rank function, which is going to take an individual player like that. And we're going to fill this logic later on. We're just setting this up at the moment. And simply what we need to do is again, just like the player stats manager, we loop over the players list like so. And then we just call the initialize player rank on the player. Just like next, we're going to create one of the most important functions here, which is going to be my handle elimination function. This is going to be run whenever somebody gets eliminated. So in here, we're going to be expecting an elim result and elim result of type elimination underscore result. And the reason we get an error here is because we need to go up here and do fortnite.com slash game. So make sure to include this game module here. And also I'm just going to include uh, the characters module here. So characters. So let's actually begin with this handle elimination function. We're not going to worry about this at the moment. For the handle elimination character, this elimination result is actually a verse or a Fortnite defined uh, struct. You can see here that when we go here to peek the definition, this is a struct that has one, the eliminated character. So the person that got eliminated and the eliminating character, you can see this has a question mark at the front because it's an optional, meaning that there may or may not be an eliminating character. So for example, if this character got eliminated by water or something, then there doesn't necessarily need to be a fourth character here that eliminated this character. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get the eliminated character. It's just going to be equal to the elim result dot eliminated character. Pretty simple. Then I'm also going to create a temporary variable here called maybe eliminating character, which is just going to be the elim result dot eliminating character. Okay. Once we have that, we want to abstract our logic again to have two different functions. One that's going to have handle the player who got eliminated and one that's going to have the player that actually eliminated someone. So let's create a new function called update eliminating player stats, which is going to take a player of type player and type void here. And then we're also going to create another function that is similar to this, but is for the eliminated player. So eliminated player stats, which takes in a player of type player. So let's work on the eliminated one first because that one is easier. Whenever somebody gets eliminated, we want to subtract one point from them. Then we want to calculate whether or not they rank down based on the amount of points we lost. Uh, but before we do this, we need to actually get the player stats of the current player. So for that, I'm actually going to go up here to the rank manager and create a new editable, which is going to be the player stats manager of player underscore stats underscore manager. Now we have access to the player stats manager so we can get the specific stats of any specific player within this rank manager. So let's start with the eliminate player stats. Firstly, we're going to get the player stats. It's going to be equal to the player stats manager dot get player stats of player. Remember in our player stats manager, we have this get player stats function, which returns the current stats of our player. So that's fine. Now we have access to their elimination, their points and their rank. So here let's create a new variable called the new points, which is going to be equal to the player stats, not points. So their current amount of points minus one. I'm going to subtract one from here, but here you can decide if you want to subtract two or three or whatever. But this currently we're not checking if this can actually go below zero. So if we have zero points and then we subtract one, we're going to have negative points, which doesn't make any sense. So we need to sort of clamp this to be at the minimum zero. So you can do that different ways. I'm just going to do it uh, using this sort of fancy syntax. So I'm going to write the following player stats points minus one is greater than or equal to zero and player stats points minus one or zero. So this is a ternary op operator, which is simply checking that if the player stats points minus one is greater than equal to zero, then we return the player stats points minus one. So just simply as normal. If this condition fails, so in this case, this would fail if the current points minus one is less than zero, 
then we return zero. The new eliminations is just going to be equal to the player stats dot eliminations because obviously they got eliminated. They didn't get an elimination. So we just keep that the same as that. And then the new rank. So the new rank is a bit more complex, not too much, but it's not as simple. We're going to actually create a new function called calculated rank because if the player points drops below a certain threshold, then we want to rank them down. So for now, let's say this is just zero, but we're definitely going to come back to this in a second. Just keep this in mind. All right, next, we need to update the, the player stats based on this new information. So we're going to create a new variable called new stats, which is equal to the player stats manager. Remember, we have this update stats function here, update stats. And in here, we're going to be expecting, again, four things. So let's start with the player, which we already have here. Then we pass in the new elimination. So new eliminations, the new points, and the new rank like that. And remember, this retrieves, this update stats, returns the new player stats that we've just updated. So we have access to the newly updated stats. But remember, this new rank, we still need to calculate that if that player ranks down. Let's make our calculate player rank down function. Firstly, we're going to take the old stats of type player underscore stats, which are just the stats before we did the whole update stats method here. And then we need the new points of type int. This is going to be void. So firstly, we're going to create get the current rank index, which is going to be equal to the old stats dot rank. Because remember, this player stats class has this rank variable as an integer. Then we're going to get the current rank class, which again is this class here. And the reason we need that is because we need the points needed for that current rank. We simply want to check if our new points is less than the points needed for our current rank. If it is, that means we've passed the amount of points needed for our current rank. So we're going to be deranking again. So to do that, firstly, we're going to get the current rank is going to be equal to, remember, this rank is going to be stored in this ranks list. And we can just index it using this current rank index. And this ranks list is just stored in the rank settings, which we've just defined up here as the settings. So to get that, we just do settings.ranks. And for the index, it's just going to be the current rank index. So now that we have the current rank, we can then do if the new points is less than the current rank dot points needed. If this is the case, then we've de rank. Now, I should also mention that this calculate player rank should return an int because we're returning the rank index. So if this is true, then we return the current rank index minus one. Otherwise, we just return the current rank index because we lost points, but we didn't rank down. Now, instead of setting new rank to be zero, we can just set this to be the calculate player rank down, where we pass in the player stats as the old stats and the new points as well, the new points. And with that, we can just now set that to the new rank. We have now successfully updated the eliminate player statistics. So now we do a similar procedure for the player who eliminated someone, just like the eliminated player. Firstly, we're going to get the player stats of the player who eliminated someone. So we're going to do player stats manager dot get player stats and we get the player stats of the player who eliminated someone. Great. And then the new eliminations here is going to be equal to the player stats dot eliminations plus one. And then for the new points here, I'm going to do the same thing. Player stats dot points plus one. You can add two if you want. You can add three if you want. You can add whatever. I'm just going to keep it at one here for the moment and for the new rank just like our eliminated player we're gonna have a calculate rank up function which calculates if the player's new point is enough to make them rank up for now we're just gonna keep it at zero and then lastly again we do the new stats is gonna be equal to the player stats manager dot update stats we pass in the player the new eliminations the new points and the new rank okay so let's actually work on this calculate player rank up function so i'm gonna write a calculate player rank of function here. We're going to take in the old stats again of type player underscore stats. And we're also going to take in the new points again of type int. And we're going to be returning the corresponding rank index. So for now, I'm just going to put zero here just so we don't get a weird error here. Just like previously, we want to get firstly the current rank index, which is just the old stats dot rank. So now we actually need to get the next rank if there even exists a next rank to check whether or not our new point is greater than the amount of points needed to reach the next rank. So to do that, we again create another if statement and the next rank rank is going to be equal to the settings dot ranks because that's where our list of ranks are of our current rank index but we need to add one here because that's going to be the next rank so if there exists a next rank then we're going to create some new logic if let's say we, we reach unreal rank then we don't actually need to check any of this and we can just return the current rank index so if there is a rank after our current rank we need to check if our new points is greater than or equal to the next rank dot points needed. So if it is, that means we have successfully ranked up. So we can just return the current rank index plus one. So here I'm just gonna create a print statement and do print ranked up. And that is pretty much our logic for calculating the rank. So now back into our limiting player stats here, instead of zero, we can just pass in the calculate 
player rank up. We pass in the old player stats, which is just the player stats that we got at the beginning, the new points like that. So now that we have that, we need to go back into this handle elimination function here because we're not actually calling these functions here. So firstly, let's work with the eliminated character here. We need to get an if statement here and we need to get the player corresponding to this eliminated character. So this player variable is going to be equal to the eliminated character dot get agent. But remember, we need the player because all these functions expect a player variable here. Since this is going to return an agent from the fourth character, we simply cast this agent into a player class. Close it with the square brackets like so and that should return a player variable here. Once we have that, we can then call the update eliminated player stats because remember this is the eliminated character and then we just pass in the corresponding player and that's going to run all of the logic that we've just created okay so next let's work with the player that got the elimination so firstly we need to even check if that eliminated character exists so i'm actually going to write an if statement here and we're, i'm going to do it like this we're going to hit the fourth character which is going to be equal to this maybe eliminating character and we're going to pass in a question mark here this question mark is going to be unpacking this optional here and then if there exists a forward character that eliminated someone, then we assign this to this forward character class. Then just like we did up here, we need to get the agent of this forward character, which is just the fourth character dot get agent right here. And I'm going to create a new line actually. And I'm, I'm just going to show you guys that this is pretty much the same thing as doing this player of agents. So these two lines is the same as what I've done here, but here I just did it in one line. I'm simply casting this agent into a player variable and assigning that to this player variable here. So now that we have the player, the last thing we need to do is we need to check actually if this fourth character that we have here is not the same as the player who was eliminated. Because if that was the case and we didn't check for that, then whenever somebody dies by fall damage, what ends up happening is sometimes the game registers as the eliminating character being the same as the person who you know died from fall damage. And what's going to happen here is we're going to be updating their stats to give them plus one points and also minus one point since both of these are going to run for the same character. So here before this get agent here, we need to check that this fourth character is not equal to the eliminated character. And I guess for clarity's sake, I'm gonna call this the eliminating character like that. And so now once we have that, we can just type this then statement and all of this is gonna run if all of this succeeds. So in this then statement, simply all we have to do here is just update the eliminating player stats and we just pass in the player that we've just got. And congratulations, that is your rank manager. All this logic should work. So how can we actually test this? How do we actually handle this elimination? Well, for that, we're gonna create a new file. Okay, so we're back in UEFN and let's create a new verse file by going to the verse explorer and we're gonna create a new file called the game underscore manager. And we're gonna create that and go in here. You're probably saying, okay, that's already three files. Why do we need three different managers? Well, the rank manager is in charge of managing all the stuff that's related to the ranks ranking up, gaining points, losing points, all that stuff. The player stats manager is simply in charge of recording and getting the stats of our player so that they can persist across multiple sessions. But the game manager is going to manage stuff that is inherent to the actual game, such as whenever somebody gets eliminated, whenever somebody joins, whenever somebody spawns, all that good stuff is going to be inside of this game manager. So in here, firstly, I'm going to add a few variables here. First is going to be an editable, which is going to be the player stats so we have a reference to our player stats manager and you can probably tell we're also going to have a reference to our rank manager. So rank manager. So then I'm also going to have another editable, which is going to be a list of player spawners. Lastly, I'm also going to create another variable called players, which is going to be a list of all players. And this is going to be an empty array in here. So when we first begin our game, we're going to populate this players array by setting this to the get play space dot get players. This is going to get all the players that are currently in your island when the game first starts. And then you can probably tell that we're going to be calling the player stats manager dot init and passing this players array. Because remember, this init function inside of this player stats manager expects a players and that's going to initialize all of their statistics and same with the rank manager it also has this init method and then rank manager dot init we init all of our managers in here then what we want to do is whenever somebody spawns we want to actually track whenever they get eliminated when they do then we signal an elimination result because that means somebody got eliminated and we can then handle that using the rank manager dot handle elimination function here well i'm going to create a new function called await elimination and it's going to take in a fourth character of type fourth underscore character and it's going to have the suspense modifier here because we're going to be awaiting for a specific event which is going to be the fourth character dot eliminated event you have to pass in these parentheses dot await 
Like that. And we're getting an error here because we need to include uh, up here the game and also the characters module. Now you can see that error goes away. So whenever somebody gets eliminated, remember uh, this is going to return an elimination result. We can just store this as a result. This eliminated event returns an elimination result as its payload. So when this event actually happens, we can then store that result into this result variable. Then we can just simply call rank manager dot handle elimination, which was the function we created. Remember back here that expects an elimination result. And then we can just pass in this result like that and our rank manager is going to completely handle that code. But we still need to call this await elimination anytime a character spawns. That's why we need the player spawners class. So I'm going to create a new function here called on player spawn, which is going to take an agent of type agent. And firstly, we're going to get the fourth character associated with this agent. So we do agent dot get fourth character. And then simply we just spawn the await elimination which takes in this fourth character. Then in our, in our on begin, we can loop through the player spawner class. So player spawner in player spawners. Then here we can simply do for every player spawner in the player spawners list, we can do player spawner dot spawned event dot subscribe to the on player spawn. So whenever somebody spawns, we're going to be listening for their elimination results whenever they get eliminated. So the last thing before we test this is we need to listen for whenever somebody joins. So for that, I'm going to create a new function here called update, which is going to run in the background pretty much for the entirety of the game. It's going to be suspense because it's going to be an asynchronous function. And I'm going to actually call a loop here. So in this loop, we're going to have the get play space player added event dot await like that. And this should have uh, these uh, parentheses like this. This is going to return a player. Now, what do we want to do with this player? Well, remember we have, we have this player's array in here. So firstly, we need to check that this player isn't already in this player's array. Let's make an if statement here. Firstly, we're going to do players dot find player. So if this succeeds, this means that this specific player who joined is already within our list. We don't want to do anything. So what we need to do here is we need to not players out find. So only if the player doesn't exist, then we're going to run the following logic. Firstly, we're going to add this player to the players list by doing set players plus equal array of the new player who just joined. And then what we need to do is remember, we have these initialized methods for the player stats manager and the player rank manager. So what we need to do here is we simply do player stats manager dot initialize player stats. We pass in the new player. Same with the rank manager, rank manager dot initialize player rank. We pass in the new player. Then we're also going to have another loop, but instead is going to be listening to whenever somebody leaves. We're just going to do loop player is going to be equal to the get play space player removed event dot await. So what we need to do here is we need to remove the player from this player's array here. I'm going to do something fancy here and I'm going to set the players is going to be equal to an, a for loop because a for loop actually returns an array. We're going to be looping for the current player in players. And we also want to have a conditional check here. We want to make sure that the current player is not equal to the player who just left. And if that's the case, then we return the current player. So this might look a little weird, but essentially what we're doing here is we're only returning the current player, which as I said, a for loop actually returns an array. So in a sense, we're returning every player inside of this player's list except the player who just left. But there's one big problem here. This loop is after this loop. So what this means is that this loop is going to run first and only when this is finished, this next loop is going to run. But this is never going to finish because we don't have any sort of break or finishing condition here. So what we need to do here is we just need to type in or a sync expression here and just tab both of these guys like that. What that's going to do is that it's going to run both of these loops here in parallel. So with the sync, both of these are going to run at the same time. And lastly, we just go after this. We just call the update function inside of this. So that way our actual player added event and player removed events are going to be listened to. That is pretty much the layout of our game manager and our player stats manager and our rank manager. So we can actually go ahead and test out if this actually works. Okay, so now what we can do is we can drag out all of our creative devices, so our rank, our game manager, and our player stats manager. So in our game manager, we first need a reference to our player stats manager, which is this, and a reference to our rank manager, and a reference to all of our player spawners. So here I only have two player spawners, so just this one and this one. The player stats manager doesn't have anything to reference, so we don't need to do anything there. But the rank manager, firstly, we need to set the player stats manager reference. So we just pick our player stats manager and then we can just set up our rank. So again, the first rank is unranked. The second one is going to be bronze, not bronze one. And then let's create another rank called silver. You're going to need 15 points. And that is pretty much all of our setup for our devices here. Now we can actually go ahead and build our first code and test this in a live play session. Okay, so here I have my alt account. You can see we have two messages there. Created new stats because no stats existed. And uh, if I actually end the game, 
you can see stats already exist for this player on the second session because we have already created that stats on the first time we actually loaded into the island. So now let's actually eliminate. And you can see we have updated player stats. So the first one is for the player who got eliminated. Obviously they have zero elimination. Their points is at zero. Even though they got eliminated, they got minus one points. We set the minimum to be zero. So their points is zero. This is for our stats. We have one elimination and one new point, but our rank is still zero. So if we eliminate them, you can see that we have ranked up player stats, eliminations five, point five, and rank one, which is our new rank, which is silver. We are finally getting into the UI module, which is going to be the last module of this tutorial. So I'm going to go up into the verse explorer here and we're going to create a new verse file, which is going to be the user underscore interface underscore manager. This is going to handle all of the UI. Okay, we're inside of this user interface manager. Now, this isn't a UI tutorial, so I'm going to go a little faster here. So firstly, we're going to be needing a custom widget, which I'm just going to call create a new class called custom progress underscore bar, which is just going to be a class. So for this custom progress bar, firstly, we need the width of the progress bar which is going to be a float and we also need the height which is going to be another float all right so before we actually get into the verse coding we're going to show you guys what the structure of our progress bar is going to look like so this isn't our going to be our ui but this is going to be a visual representation that way i don't have to explain why things are the way they are so how do we actually create a progress bar firstly we're going to be needing one of these guys an overlay and overlay just has things stacked on top of each other so to illustrate that we're going to grab one of these images which is just going to be a color block in our uh, verse code and this is going to be the background because this was added first this is going to be rendered below everything else and for the background you can see we have a couple of options here firstly we have the horizontal alignment we want to make sure this is left and the vertical alignment is just going to be centered like that so this is our background let's say this is going to be size 300 then we're going to add another color block on top of this which is going to be the foreground. You can already see that because this renders on top, it sort of simulates the progress bar kind of thing. So if we make this orangey color, we can then simply increase the size. And you can see that as we increase the size, it looks like it's filling up. The next thing we need is we need some indicator that shows us what our progress looks like. So in, inside of this overlay, again, we're going to be adding a text block in here. And this, we're going to center this horizontally and center this. That is what that's going to look like. The next thing we need is we're going to be needing a text block that appears up here that tells you the current rank you're on, right? This should be up here. But you can see a problem is that if I move this overlay, this bronze text block, I have to move it manually. So what we can do here to make this always appear on top is put these guys inside of a stack box, which is going to be one of these guys. So I'm going to drag this stack box in here and firstly i'm going to put the text block inside of the stack box and then we just want to put the overlay after this bronze thing you're going to notice that this is now to the right which is not what we want simply to change that we go into the stack box and for the settings we change the orientation from horizontal to vertical and now that is and for the alignment horizontally that's going to be center and the last thing we need is going to be the actual image of uh, the rank for this color block i'm going to set this to be something like bronze image so you might think we can just add a stack box here and then have you know that be stacked like this but if we try that you see yeah, at first glance that looks fine right that pretty much looks perfect but the problem is let's say we're gonna have this like on top of the health bar right and we have this here but let's say our other image is some different size let's say this is something like 90 by 80 you can see that that slightly pushed this progress bar like to the right which might be problematic if you have different sized images if you want to have all your images be the same exact size then use a stack box it's perfectly acceptable personally what i'm going to do is i'm going to actually not have this and in, be inside of a stack box and instead have this be inside of an overlay okay so we're going to add an overlay which is going to be the root widget and in here i'm going to add firstly rank image which is going to be this one and then we're also going to add our progress bar you can see that now this is like clipping on top of it we're going to go into this uh texture block um, we're going to make this firstly centered aligned and then for the padding the right is going to be 200 and notice that now that sort of pushes it in kind of the same direction that we had it before of course it's a bit of a hacky kind of solution but it just makes sure that if i resize this like let's say 200 uh that kind of clips but it's not actually going to be moving this progress bar and if you wanted to fix that you could just increase the ride padding by like say 250 and that is pretty much what we're going to be doing for the ui except it's going to be done in first i'm going to assume that you already imported your uh textures in some folder inside of another folder Mine is called my texture and then ranks. The first thing we need to do is we need to go in here and we need to declare. If you look at this assets file, you can see that we have two modules, the my textures, which is corresponds to one folder, and then the ranks module, which corresponds to another folder. And inside of this folder, we actually have all of our images here. Uh, but what we need to do is we need to make both of these modules public. So we can just copy these 
and then go back into this user interface and like somewhere down here it doesn't really matter where uh, you can just do it like this and you want to mark both of these with the public specifier that way we actually can access all of our ranks this and now what you can do is you can go up here and do using my textures dot ranks that is going to allow us to now reference all the all the icons inside of this ranks folder. Now, do keep in mind that if you have some variable called bronze of type int equals zero, it's going to throw an error because there already exists a bronze um, name inside of this ranks file. If you want to avoid that, you can just import the my textures module. But what that means is that now if you want to get the image, we just do my textures dot bronze like that. You can see that uh, gives us our, an image. For simplicity's sake, I'm going to import the entire my textures dot ranks folder in here. Okay, so our custom progress bar currently has a width and a height, but we're also going to have a rank texture block. This is what's actually going to be rendering our image. And the default image of this rank texture block is just going to be the unranked picture. And the reason we get an error is because we need to go up here and we need to firstly include the UI module up here and then here unrealengine.com slash temporary slash UI again and then verse.org slash assets. Next is remember we have two color blocks. One is the foreground and one is the background. So color block, the first one's gonna be the foreground of type color underscore block equals color underscore block like this. And then this is gonna be the, this is gonna be the background. So next we need the text block for the rank we're currently in. So we create a rank text block of type text underscore block equals text underscore block. And lastly, we need the text block of our current progress. So we're gonna do progress text block of type text underscore block equals text underscore. Those are gonna be our main widgets that we're going to be using and then lastly we're also going to have a root widget which as you recall was the entire overlay that was moving everything else along with it root widget which is going to be a widget and for now i'm just going to initialize this to something like a color block doesn't really matter since we're going to be changing this uh, anyway i would create an init method and, the, and inside this init method is where we're actually going to be setting up the structure of our color block and i also forgot to mention that inside of this text block uh, what you can do is you can do default text color is going to be equal to named colors colors dot white and you want to go up here to verse.org slash colors that way we default these tech blocks to be white color firstly do set root widget equals overlay because remember that was our highest widget or whatever so this overlay is going to have an array of slots so we can just do slots colon equals array and to add our first texture block we just create an over overlay underscore slot and the widget is going to be the of course rank texture block and also we're gonna have the horizontal and vertical alignment here for the overlay slot horizontal align alignment only equals horizontal underscore alignment dot center right. the next thing is remember we have these paddings to actually make this be to the left so we create this paddings uh, by doing the following just type in padding colon equals we type in a margin and the right padding remember that was 250.0 or whatever you feel is appropriate uh, that's it for the first overlay slot the second overlay slot Slot, the widget is going to be the stack underscore box so the stack box it needs two things firstly the orientation so the orientation remember this was stacked vertically so this is going to be initialized to orientation vertical and then just like the overlay this is going to have a slot of widgets so slots is going to be an array we're going to have a stack underscore box underscore slot which is going to be the first widget inside of this stack box which as you can recall is firstly this rank widget so let's add the widget this is going to be equal to the rank text block and then again the horizontal right so then we create another stack box slot and this time the widget is going to be another overlay and this overlay is going to have again an array of slots and the first widget is going to be an overlay underscore slot this is going to be the one all the way at the back so this one should be the color block background and then for the horizontal alignment this is going to be aligned to the left and then we follow a similar procedure i'm just going to copy this paste this here and then copy this press shift tab to move this to the left Instead of this widget being the color block background, we set this to the color block foreground. The last slot we're going to be using, so the last widget inside of this overlay, is of course going to be the progress text block, which is going to be the progress text block. And for this horizontal alignment, this one is going to be aligned at the center. All right, I know that was a bit of a hassle here. Up here inside of this init method, firstly, we want to set the color block background dot set desired size. This is going to be a vector two and for the x that's just going to be the width and the y is going to be the height variable here we're getting an error here because we need to go up here to the unreal engine and include this temporary slash spatial 
math module that way we have access to this vector and then we do the same for the foreground so essentially we're just setting the foreground and the background color block to be the same size and that's it for our init method we need a function that actually can get the root widget so i'm going to create down here a get root widget function which returns a widget which in this case is just going to be the root widget now i'm also going to create some setters which are just going to allow us to set the colors of all of our stuff so firstly set foreground color which takes in a color of type color and this is going to be go to the color block foreground dot set color the color and sorry this should be type void equals like that we can just copy this and instead of foreground this is going to be the background and we can just set this same to the uh background color and then we're also going to have a set rank text which is going to take a string of type string void and here we're going to be setting the rank text which is this uh rank text block text block dot set text to this string you'll notice we get an error here because this needs to be a message not a text. To fix that, we can go not inside of the class, uh, but like outside of here, create the string to message function. You need to add this localizes thing here. And we take in a string of type string, which returns a message and you can just set it like this. So what this does is this just simply converts a string variable, because it here into a message so then we can use this string to message function, to message function and pass in our string, which was in here to actually set the text block of our rank. And then lastly, we need the set uh, progress text, which again takes a string of type string. And we just set the progress text block dot set text string to message string. And then lastly, we, we're going to have this set image here. So set image. And we're going to take in a new image of type texture and we're actually going to take in a new size of type vector 2 it's going to be void equals so first we're going to do the rank texture block dot set image to be this new image like that then we're going to do rank texture block dot set desired size to be this new size variable here texture block sorry so this texture block so dot set the desired size all right so lastly what we need is we need a way for the actual progress bar to you know actually increase in size whenever we increase our uh, progress so i'm going to create a final function here called set progress this is going to take an in progress of type float and then also the progress text of type string because whenever we get let's say a new point we update not only the amount of progress in our text, like let's say we now have seven points out of 15, but we also want to update the size of the progress bar. So that's how we take in the progress and this text. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a temporary variable called uh, new progress of type float. This is going to be equal to 0.0. .0. So what we want to do here is we want to limit this in progress to be in the range of 0 to 1. So the way we can do that is we can simply do if in progress is greater than 1.0 then we set the new progress equals to 1.0 we're simply just capping the maximum progress to be 1.0 because 1.0 means the bar is completely full else if in progress is less than 0.0 then set new progress equals 0.0 again if our progress is less than 0.0 that doesn't make any sense because we would have negative progress so that's why we limit this to be 0.0 otherwise then the new progress just equals to the in progress because it doesn't exceed any of the bounds so we can just safely assign this in progress to be the new progress we can do is we can get the new width of the color block which is going to be equal to this new progress times the actual width the total width of the other block if this is 0.5 then this is going to get half of the width which means we're at halfway through the progress and then we, what we can do is we can use the color block foreground dot set desired size which is going to be a vector 2 the x is going to be equal to the new width and dy is just going to be equal to the height that we already have because we don't really need to change the height and then lastly we want to set progress text to be this new progress text variable in here and that is going to be our set progress function we're going to call that anytime our points change so that is it for our custom progress bar class here, but we're still not done. We need to actually create this user interface manager to be able to, you know, actually manage this custom progress bar class. So to do this, firstly, um, I, again, I'm going to get rid of this on begin method. We don't really need it here. And I'm going to create an init method, which again, takes a list of players void like this. And we're also going to create an initialized player UI, which just takes in a player of type player void equals like 
that. And for this init method, we can just do for the player in players list initialize player UI of player. So this initialize player UI, what is going to go in here? We need to get the canvas. We need to create a new canvas. We need to create a new custom progress bar and, and add all of that into our player widget. So to do that, firstly, I'm going to create a new canvas of type canvas. Then I'm going to create a new progress bar of type custom underscore progress bar, which is going to be a custom progress bar. And here is going to expect me to initialize the width and the height. So for the width, I'm going to make this 300.0 and then the height this is going to be something like 30.0. You can play around with these methods yourself. So once we have our progress bar, we need to make sure that we call this init function so that it actually builds the root widget. So we just simply call progress bar dot init. Next thing we need to do is we need to add the root widget of the progress bar into the actual canvas. Uh, for that, the canvas, it only accepts canvas slots. So let's make a new canvas slot. It's going to be a canvas slot. It's going to be equal to a canvas underscore slot. And here's where we can actually play around with the position of our widget. So let's actually first see the widget initialize that to the progress bar dot get root widget like that that's going to add the entire progress bar into this canvas slot so in this case i'm going to have it be positioned uh, on top of our health bar thingy here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go into this overlay here and we're going to go into this anchors tab and for this anchors we want to anchor this to the bottom left this one it indicated by this cube at the bottom left that's going to select the anchor there what that means is that any translation and any scale is going to be relative to this anchor. So when your HUD uh, scale scales down, what's going to happen is your entire widget is going to scale down here rather than the default anchor, which is up here to top left. You can see that we have uh, two things, the position X and then the position Y. If we select these to be zero, zero, you can see that gets positioned at the root of the anchor, which, you know, is fine. Uh, but right now, what I want is I want this to be positioned up here. So for the position X, I'm going to have this be something like 115. I'm just going to position it to the right like that. And then for the position Y, what we can do is we can do negative 250. So you can play around with this. So back in here, uh, what this means for us is firstly, we're going to set our anchors, anchors here to be this anchors thing. So the anchors, if we go back in here, you can see that when we expand this anchors, we have a minimum and a maximum. Ideally, these two should be the same. And you can see here that the minimum is at X position zero because we're at all the way to the left and that's position one. The higher your Y position, the more sort of down you're gonna be. So this one is gonna be all the way at the bottom here. Hence, we get bottom left. So back here, what we can do is we can just initialize this minimum, which is inside this anchors struct to be a vector two where X is again, all the way to the left and Y is gonna be all the way at the bottom, which is 1.0. And then we initialize the maximum like this to simply be the same. Now, the next thing we need is the position. So for position, we're gonna be using this offsets. Remember here, and this is gonna take a margin. So as margin, the X position is gonna be your left. So left is gonna be uh, again, 115.0. And then for the Y, it's actually gonna be your top, which as we've discussed, needs to be negative so something like negative 275.0 is going to be uh, what we're going to be working with cool now we have our canvas slot we can simply just do canvas dot add widget and we just pass in the newly created canvas slot so this is cool and in theory what we can do here is we can make an if statement get the player ui of our player like so and you know just simply do player ui dot add widget our canvas but the only problem is uh this initialized player uh we're gonna be losing the reference to our progress bar and to our canvas which means that whenever we rank up we're not going to be able to tell this ui manager that we want the progress bar belonging to this player to change colors or change the image or whatever so to do that we're going to be creating a map here that's going to be storing both of these widgets um, per player that way we can always access the player the widgets that belong to the specific player and to do that i'm going to create a struct here so outside of this class called player underscore widgets you can call it rank widgets this is just going to be a struct and this is going to take a canvas like that and it's also going to take a progress bar of type custom underscore progress bar why do we want this well then we can go up here into this user interface manager and create a variable called player widgets map which takes in a player as a key and returns a corresponding player underscore widgets struct just in a size that to a map so now what that allows us to do is we can now save this new canvas and progress created for this player inside of this map and we can only access it whenever we have access to that specific player firstly let us create a new player widgets variable here 
I'm going to call this player widget is going to be equal to the player underscore widget. And we just simply initialize the canvas to be equal to the canvas we've just created and the progress bar to just be equal to the progress bar we've just created. And what we can do is in this if statement is we can simply do set player widgets map of player equals the new player widgets. And that way we've safely assigned this player widgets. And the only way we can get this player widget is when we have access to this specific player. So that's it for initialize player UI, but this is only going to set up the player UI. It's not going to initialize the actual rank values and all the text and all that uh, to actually get the colors and all the text associated with the current progress of the player. I'm going to create a new method called init rank UI, okay, which again takes in a player of type player, but we also want to have access to the player stats of type player underscore stats and also the rank settings remember from from our rank manager of type rank underscore settings so firstly we're just gonna get the rank index which again is just located within the player stats and that's just the rank variable and what we want to do here is we want to have some sort of function that updates our rank and this update function is going to run either whenever we firstly initialize a player or when they achieve a new rank let's create an update rank function which again takes in a player takes in the player stats of type player underscore stats and takes in the rank settings of type rank underscore settings. Besides that, we're also going to have another function because anytime we get an elimination, we're not always going to have to be updating the rank. For that, we're going to create another function called update progress, which is going to be in charge of only updating the size of the color block and then the actual text inside of the progress. And again, this is going to take a player of type player, a player stats of type player underscore stats, and the rank settings of type rank underscore settings. So let's actually start with the update progress function first, because this update rank is actually going to be using this update progress, because whenever we update the rank, we always update the progress. But whenever we update the progress, we don't always necessarily update the rank. So firstly, it is update progress. Firstly, let us get the rank index again, which again, is just the player stats dot dot rank member variable here. And firstly, we need to get the current player widgets that again, we've stored in the player widgets map. So for do that, we just do widgets colon equals to player widgets map of player. We have access to the player here. So we have access to their own unique player UI widget. The next thing we need is the current rank class. So we're going to go in here and get the current rank, which is going to be equal to, again, the ranks are stored in the settings. So we access the rank settings dot ranks. And because this is a list, we access the specific rank depending on our current rank index that is found in our player stats. Okay, so the next thing we need to check is we need to check if there is a rank after the rank we're currently in. Uh, and the reason we need to do that is because we want to show the total amount of points that we need to get to the other rank. But if we're like at say unreal rank, then there's no other points. So we can just show the amount of points we have as a kind of high score since the progress is already finished. Firstly, we need to get the next rank. We need to check if there even is a next rank by again doing the rank settings, getting the ranks list, and then indexing it by the rank index plus one. If there is a next rank, then what we need to do is we need to calculate the actual width of our progress bar. And that is pretty simple. Actually, uh, it's just a bit of math. Progress is going to be equal to first we need to get the number of a point we currently have that is found within the player stats dot points. Then we need to subtract the amount of points needed to actually achieve the current rank we're in. So we subtract here, we just get the current rank dot points needed. And I'm going to put this in parentheses. And what we need to do is we need to divide this by the next rank dot points needed and we subtract that again from the current rank dot points needed just like that and we have to put this in parentheses again that way we have a sort of normalized value between um, our current points and the points that follow after you can see we get an error here because we're doing integer division which verse just doesn't like for whatever reason so we just added a 1.0 times here to force this into a floating point value and same thing here i'm gonna actually 1.0 times this and we're just going to enclose this in parentheses like so, right? So this should return some value between one and zero, where zero would be your, you have zero points in your current rank. And one would be you actually have the amount of points needed to get to the next rank. So we have that progress. Now, next, we need the progress text. And the progress text is pretty simple. This one's just going to be, we're going to create a new variable called progress text, which is just going to be the a string. The current amount of points you have, which again, we can find in the player stats class here. And then we can just put a slash and show that we are at the next rank dot points 
needed. So now that we have the progress number and the progress X, we can just go back into our widgets here, our widgets dot progress bar because we want to access the progress bar dot set progress so here we simply just pass in the calculated progress and the progress text we now have our update progress function which will run anytime we get an elimination or anytime we get eliminated but this is only handling the case where there is a next rank if there isn't a next rank then it's really simple the progress is just going to be equal to 1.0 because that means we've reached the last rank so the progress bar should be at full unless you want it to be empty for whatever reason and then for the progress text what i'm going to do is i'm going to actually pass in the player stats dot points just to show the players total points they have and then simply we just do widgets dot progress bar dot set progress and then we just pass in our progress and our progress text we now have our fully updated update progress function here great now let's actually work on the update rank and remember this update rank function is only going to run when we actually achieve a new rank either by deranking or by ranking up so like always let us get the rank index just for ease of access which is just the player stats dot rank so before we do this firstly we need to know what sort of color we want to do for the new rank and what sort of image we're going to have for the new rank so i'm actually going to go into my rank manager here and in the rank settings, just because it's easier here, I'm going to add a new variable called images, which is going to be an array of textures here. And to actually get this to show up, we need to go up here and include this assets module here. It's going to be an array of textures, which is going to be an array like this. So in here, this is important. You need to go back into your UEFN and you need to set up the images in the order you want your ranks to appear. There's no editable for images, unfortunately. So you are going to have to set them up here. You know, you just set them in this array and then we can just index them just like we do with the ranks by the rank index that we store in the player stats. So I'm actually going to go here and do the whole using my modules, which was my textures dot rank. Well, then we can do something like uh, this is the first image is going to be unranked, then bronze, then silver, then gold, then champion for whatever reason. OK, so that's set up. So now we can access the images using the rank settings. But another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my rank class and I'm going to add two editable fields. One is going to be the foreground color, which is going to be a color that we can then customize and fully customize from the first device. And we need to go up here and make sure we include the colors module. And you probably guessed it. We're also going to make an editable for the background color type. Perfect. Now that we have that, we can go back into our user interface manager. And in this update rank, see, we're going to get the widgets of our player. So we do player widgets map of player. That's going to give us our player widgets, we can, which we can then assign to this widgets variable. And we're also going to get the new rank, which is just going to be the rank settings dot ranks again. And we index it using the rank. Index. And then lastly, we need the image of the new rank, which is going to be again the rank settings dot images of our rank index, which is going to get the appropriate texture corresponding to our rank index. So once we have that, we need to firstly update the color of the foreground, update the color of the background, update the rank name and update the image of our rank texture block. So we do widgets dot progress bar dot set foreground color to be our new rank dot foreground color and then we do the same thing for the background color here so we can just copy this and paste in background color and set this to the new rank dot background color next we need to update the widgets dot progress bar dot set rank text and this is going to be the new rank dot name remember we have the name variable in here so that's an easy way to just get the name there and then lastly we need to update the image so we do widgets dot progress bar dot set image which firstly we need to pass in the new image and we pass in a size which could be a vector 2 and this is going to be x 80.0 and y 70.0 what you could also do is you can go into the rank manager and what you could do is you can make an at editable here image size of type vector 2 vector 2 and the reason this doesn't work is because we need to go up here and set the uh, spatial math module spatial math set your own image size in the verse editor so i'm just going to initialize this to something like 80 80.0 and y is going to be equal to 70.0 as the default so you could do this and then go back into your user interface manager and instead of hard coding this vector 2 you can just get the new rank dot image size like that i don't know why i'm caps but but that is it for the actual updated thing but now we just need to call the update progress because remember this was actually going to be updating the length of our progress bar and the actual amount of points we have so we just pass in the player player stats and the rank settings okay so once we have that we can go back to our init rank ui and we're actually not going to be needing this rank index at all 
we can just call the update rank function which again just takes in the player the player stats that we already have access to and the rank settings and what's going to happen is whenever we initialize this rank ui it's going to get the current settings and then apply those to the current progress bar meaning that whenever somebody joins they're going to get the rank that they're currently on when they spawn with all that we now have our update ui one last thing we still need to sort of actually call these methods from within the rank manager whenever this happens but before we do that we're going to actually go into our game manager here and we're going to get a reference to our brand new ui manager by making another editable which is going to reference the ui manager of type user underscore interface manager user underscore interface manager and then after the player stats manager because we always want to load their stats before doing anything else so after the player stats what we can do is we can do ui manager dot init make sure you do it in this order otherwise you might get some unexpected bugs and just like we have the init method here we can go into whenever somebody joins and after the player stats manager we can do the ui manager dot initialize player ui and do the player again and with that we now have successfully initialized our ui manager and that's also going to initialize a player whenever they join so the last thing we need is we need this actual ui manager to update whenever we track a new elimination or whenever the rank changes and the rank changes logic is always going to be happening within this rank manager obviously we need a reference to our ui manager so let's make an editable here which is going to be the ui manager of type user underscore interface manager like like that and i'm actually going to move this settings class to be below this uh, just personal preference so in our initialized player rank uh here all we're going to do is we're going to do in ui manager dot init rank ui and we just pass in the player and remember this init rank ui expects a player the player stats and the rank settings so we go back in here and the player stats is easy because we have access to the player stats manager so we just do player stats manager dot get player stats of player and lastly we just pass in the settings just like that we've now initialized the rank ui from within the rank manager so let us actually go on into the elimination because remember when we update the stats this is where we want to actually update the user interface the progress bar so we're going to do it here okay, so let's do the eliminating player stats first so we want to check here whether or not the player has ranked up and we can do so because remember we have access to the new stats and the old stats so we can just compare the rank of both of those two and if they're different that means that our rank has changed so we can call the update rank method so if new stats dot rank is not equal to the the old stats which in this case was just the player stats there's stats dot rank then what we can do is we can do ui manager dot update rank and of course we pass in the player the new stats here make sure to pass in the new stats because that's what we want to update to and finally the settings which are the rank settings right this is only if the new rank is not the same as the old rank if it is that means we changed progress so if we do that then we just need to call ui manager dot update progress like that we just want to update the progress not the entire rank and again just pass in the player the new stats and the settings now can you guess what we're we're going to be doing for the eliminated player the same thing we can just copy paste this in here like this copy paste this in here so again firstly whenever they lose a point we're going to check whether or not their new rank is the same or not as the old rank if it's not that means we need to update the rank to whatever the new rank is else we just update the progress and what do you know this is the end we finally have our custom rank system up and running we just need to go back here and build our verse code and importantly we need to drag out our creative devices here so the last one we need is this ui manager we don't have any options here so let's skip that this game manager however is going to have the ui manager so we need to pick our ui manager here otherwise it's not going to work and we have the player stats manager and the rank manager all set up the player stats manager has nothing so that's fine and then lastly we have this rank manager which needs a reference to our user interface manager so for the settings let me add a couple of ranks here uh, like i said the first one is going to be unranked where we have zero points needed the foreground color let's make this something like this like purplish pink kind of thing and then we can just do something like this you can notice that that's going to be the color of our progress bar and the image size we can just leave that as 80 by 70. okay so i have these all set up but i'm also going to set up the gold by going in here and adding a new element All right, so I'm finished setting this up. Now we can actually play test by building our verse code and testing this out. All right, so I have my auto count here and I'm gonna start the game and we should see that our rank starts as that unranked. There you go, you can see unranked with our background colors. If I eliminate my alt, you can see my progress bar goes progresses and we have one out of five. 
rank. So I'm just going to eliminate my alt. Last time here. And there we go. We've reached the bronze rank. It you can see that when we get eliminated, we derank to unranked again. And it's using the colors that we've defined in our rank device. So I'm just going to quickly rank up and show you guys that that is 100% working. Now, one thing you might notice is that whenever you push new verse changes, the stats reset. That's only a play session thing in actual game. Whenever you leave the game, the stats will always save. All right, so I've just set up a test environment here where the bots actually are going to rank me up. And we're just going to see what ranking up all the way to champion looks like just to show you guys what that would look like and as you can see we have reached the champion rank anyway that is it for this tutorial um again it was a long tutorial but if you made it to the end uh thank you so much for watching and i hope you made a cool rank system but as always i hope this was helpful and yeah